I've been wearing the Vision Pro now every day for the last three weeks. And I thought I'd share some details in my first official review. Out of the gate, I know the question on most people's minds is, do you regret your purchase? I will tell you, I do not. And hold up, let's rewind a second. I started this channel just to share my interest for the Vision Pro, to answer some questions that I know people in the community had. And you may have seen my first clip showing my workspace and how I set everything up go viral across all the socials. And now that I've continued to post for the last few weeks and I've seen a lot of you coming back, I figured by now I should introduce myself. My name is Michael. No, I do not work for Apple. I do work in digital marketing though, but more on the paid media analytics side. I never really did any content, so go easy on me. For some context, I'm absolutely obsessed with this type of technology. I've had many headsets over the years, and actually I happen to be traveling with my girlfriend during the official scheduled Apple Vision Pro live stream event. I may just have a later dinner so we could watch it live together. Then over the following months, I read every article, watched every video I could, and I still was left with a lot of questions about the device until day one when it arrived in my hands. Which brings us back to the official product review. Am I going to use this to be working at home like I showed in that first video showing off the workspace? Honestly, no. But when I'm working remote and I don't have these screens here, absolutely, I think it's gonna be a game changer. Being able to have as many screens as I need wherever I want them is definitely one of my favorite features of this device. When it does come time to actually set up all those screens and get some work done when you are away from your main office, it's super quick and easy to actually set up your workspace. And I was surprised at how fluid everything was compared to working on something like a Quest 3, trying to do the same sort of thing. Now, I won't lie, I have had some bugs here and there where it really slowed me down. For example, sometimes my Mac wouldn't connect or the mouse wouldn't move over to the Vision Pro apps when I'm connected. So it's not without its flaws, but most of the time it really does just work as you would expect. Although again, to be honest, once I'm working with that headset on for more than an hour or so, I do find myself starting to miss my physical screens. But what about the day to day when you're sitting at home and you don't wanna work? Do I actually find myself using this device pretty frequently throughout the days? And this is the first headset where I can say yes, there are a lot of features that I really love compared to something like a Quest 3 or a PSVR 2. Now, of course, this is not a headset for gaming, so if that is your main use case, I would not recommend the Vision Pro. But when you wanna watch a movie, it is fantastic. I was really surprised at just how good the fidelity is when you're trying to watch a 3D movie or even just a normal film on the headset, making a giant screen across your wall wherever you want or laying in bed and kind of having it in front of you like that. It is hard to understand just how they're able to make it look so good. I still don't get it, but I'm super happy with it. Now, comfort is an issue. You can see here, I'm actually sticking with the solo loop band. I found that you kind of want to keep it a little bit higher on your head like this, and it's a bit more comfortable, but it's a little bit finicky and you got to play around with it for a bit. The dual strap is also quite comfortable. It's actually super easy to switch between the straps, which again, is not too common with other headsets that I've used. All we got to do is take this orange tab here, pop it off, pop this off, and then take this one, pop it on, pop it on, and we're good to go. Just like that. <laughs> so it's nice to have the option there and to be able to switch between those straps. Uh, but again, after an hour, 90 minutes, maybe up to two hours at that point, I do find myself wanting to take it off. So let's say right at the point of where I'm trying to watch a full movie, I don't want to wear it much longer than that. I'm really hoping some third-party straps come out with some better options soon. For example, this strap for the Quest 3 is a third party from Bobo VR, and it makes it so that you can kind of have this headset floating in front of your eyes and you don't have any light seal that is uh, pushing against your cheeks or your forehead. And it kind of looks like that and a little bit of a gap there. So hoping that somebody comes out with something like this for the Apple Vision Pro. I'll also say that the pass through, I think reviewers that had the headset early, they made it seem like some miracle. It is really good. It's much better than the Quest 3 easily, but it's not perfect. When I first put it on to do an Apple Store demo, I was honestly a little bit underwhelmed based on all the reading I had done. Now, it is still good enough to read your phone and answer a text. I would say it's usable, where the Quest 3 I would say was barely passable. And it's a great step, but I think there's still quite a bit of work to be done to make that pass through like truly effective. I'll also say that the App Store for Vision Pro is truly lacking. Apple announced they had 600 apps specifically built for Vision Pro on launch day. 
I don't know where to find them. If you go to the Vision Pro section of the Apple Store, you see the same 10, 20 apps, and I had to go dig online to see what else is available. And a lot of the stuff that's made for Vision Pro is honestly not that great. I've shown in another video a kind of showcase of certain apps that I do really like playing with, but there's a lot lacking there, especially for discoverability in the App Store. Also, there's been a lot of reviews and talk about spatial video and personas. I wanna bucket those together and say both, I think, need a lot of work. The spatial videos, they're cool, but I don't think it's some life-changing emotional experience like some reviewers have said. It's a cool feature, but I'm not gonna spend tons of time just looking at spatial videos. And then with personas, my plan was to try to join a couple of business meetings with the headset on. The second I saw a persona, I said, no, this is just not professional enough. It's cool to maybe try with friends or on a FaceTime, but I'm not going to use that in a professional setting. It's just not there yet. I understand that it's a very complex tech to get working right, to have a full 3D model in real time of your face and I hope that they improve it over the years, but right now it's just not ready. Also, if you were to try to use personas in a business meeting or on a Zoom call, I was having an issue where if I try to share my screen, it shares my entire view with all the floating windows. That just doesn't work. I mean, I need to share just one screen and talk about whatever is on that screen. I don't want everybody in the meeting to be able to see everything that I'm looking at. So hoping that's just a quick software update, I think on Zoom's side, but a lot of work I think still needs to be done to be using this in a true professional setting. I also will say the eye tracking is impressive. You look at something, you tap, it's done. There are certain cases where you might have elements on a web page or a window that's maybe kind of far away where the eye tracking, you're trying to find that specific button and you might accidentally be selecting the other button. It happens 5% of the time, generally, as I'm looking through the UI. For example, even on the Apple TV app, if I'm trying to move the window with the little bar below the playhead, sometimes I accidentally grab the playhead and then I move it 10 minutes into the show it's a little frustrating. So the eye tracking, as good as it is, again, I would not say it's perfect. There's a little more work that needs to be done on that side as well. Testing some of these early AR apps though, the fidelity of the displays, being able to place a 3D model in a very fixed position or a screen floating in a fixed position in front of you, something I haven't seen done well in other headsets. And no, there are not many apps that do this right now, but you can already get a sense that this technology is going to stay and it's only going to get better and better and developers i think are going to do a better job of creating apps that take advantage of this new computing platform if you remember when the iphone first came out there was no app store now you have multiple billion dollar businesses built off the backbone of that platform think lime uber airbnb i think we're going to see similar things in the spatial computing space that right now most people cannot even comprehend so i'm excited to see what happens i hope developers really take advantage of this and I'm excited to see the future of this product line because this is the worst it will ever be. I'll just reiterate at the end, the screens look so good. If you're trying to watch a movie, any UI elements, crystal clear, you see no pixels. If I had to guess for Vision Pro 2, maybe in the next two, three years, I think the screens might not improve that much. I think we're gonna look for improvements in, of course, weight, improvements in the software that translates those camera views into pass-through and improvements in things like eye tracking, finger tracking like this. So that's what I'd expect. I could be wrong, but I'm interested to see how this product line matures in the coming years. Make sure to let me know if you have any questions in the comments. And thanks for watching as always.